We always say any question we ask is an opportunity to improve. You really shouldn't have had to ask that question. The fact that you had to stop and ask that question means that there's an improvement opportunity there. Welcome to Lean Made Simple, a podcast for people who want to transform their business one step at a time. My name is Ryan Tierney from a company called Seaton Matters in Lumbavati in Northern Ireland. Uh, eight years ago, I came across this thing called Lean and it totally transformed my whole way of thinking. And now I'm so passionate to share this knowledge and this energy with as many people as possible. My name is Matthew Thompson. I'm a podcast producer from Belfast. We're joined in the studio today with producer Mark and a very, very special guest, James, Ryan's son, to talk <laughs> all about this sentence stopping principle known as wherever you ask the question, that's where the answer should be. And we'll explain why it's sentence stopping as we get into it. But Ryan, Fundamental, we're going to go through our three levels like we always do for these lean principles. Yeah. First level is our personal lives, individual lives. Second level is for our companies and our organizations and our teams. And the third level is where we get all philosophical and we talk about the global and societal impact if yeah. we were to implement this principle. So let's uh, start off on the first floor, as it were. Personal, individual lives. Tell me about this concept and a, a very kind of first step explanation of it. Yeah. So th this concept, wherever you ask the question, that's where the answer should be, is such a powerful concept, it, it really is. And it's something that we talk about over and over and over again uh, at our company. Um, we, we came across Lean, or I came across Lean eight years ago, and it was really a light bulb moment for me. And I thought for me to get Lean to stick in our company, the messaging has to be really clear. It has to be boiled down to a level where every single person can understand it. So we come up with this concept where every ask a question, that's where the answer should be to make that to make that learning or that transition really clear. Mm. And it's something that everybody can apply. So a real simple example is if you're sitting uh, in our canteen, our staff canteen at Seat Matters, and you ask, what is the Wi-Fi password? You just have to look up and there's where the answer is. <laughs> So you're asking, what is the Wi-Fi password? There's the answer. Yeah. If I'm making a cup of tea, I'm thinking, where is the tea bags? There's the tea bags. Where is the milk? There's the... Wherever you're asking the question is mm -hmm. where the answer should be. Yeah. So another really good example is in our sewing department uh, in the company. So sewing machines and machinery breaks down. That's just part of, 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 of how things work. But we have the answer for the sewing machine mechanic right at the sewing machine. Nice. So when you want to phone the, phone the sewing machine mechanic to serve as a machine or to fix something, the answer is right there. So you're asking, where is the number for the mechanic? There's the answer. Mm. So that's how we think, and that's how we've created such an efficient and productive workplace by this really simple concept. So, I mean, I, this may be kind of <clears> like, I don't know if this is right or a good application of this concept, but... I was telling you about like after meeting you, I'm trying to make a cut in the grass of my front and back garden or just in our family home a little bit easier. Yeah. So I did this thing where we have one of those boxes where we keep the, the lawnmower and I had to change the oil and I was like, where on earth is the oil? And I was running around hoking through the boxes trying to find the oil. And then I remembered this concept because you told me about it before. <laughs> so I made a really <coughs> simple change. I brought the oil and it now lives inside the box with the lawnmower. So next time I go to change the oil, wherever I'm asking the question, that's where the answer should be. Where's the oil for the lawnmower? Oh, there it is. It's right there. Yeah. Is that an application of that? It's, it's 100%. That, okay. That's exactly. And it's that simple. It really is that simple. Another example we had just this morning before I came up here to do the podcast, we have a server cabinet in the office where all the servers and all that kind of stuff uh, is held. We needed the key for the cabinet. And before I could finish the asking the question, where is the server key cabinet? The key is right there. Mm. So the answer is where the question is asked. It's not on somebody's head. It's not on a file. It's not stored on a computer and a separate office the answer is wherever you're actually asking the question i love that yeah <laughs> and you know what i like about lean and a lot of the principles that you teach and apply uh, in your company seat matters is there's an element of like granny wisdom to it right and so even something simple like having a hook where you hang your car keys when you come yeah. into the house it just solves that for that question that beings human existence is where are my car keys <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's class. And I noticed another one yesterday in our, our vans. We have delivery vans. And I don't know who done this improvement, but 
I got into the van and I noticed a label on the dashboard with the height of the van on the label. Ah. Because every time you go to like a, a multi-story car park and it says maximum height restriction, two point whatever, whatever it is, you're always asking, what is the height of this vehicle? Yeah. The answer is right there. Class. So you can see that, yes, this van will fit three. It's such a simple thing. <laughs> but think of the time and the, the energy that that saves. Yeah. You know, have, having those answers. Well, you have 60 plus people at Seaton Matters. Is that about yeah, right? Yeah, that, yeah. So you imagine if I, there's if I was like a big data guy, you know, maybe producer Mark, this is kind of like more <laughs> your territory, but like if you were to find a way of like reducing the amount of questions that you guys ask across your team, even by like 20% a year, yeah. the amount of brain power that you're saving must be massive. Exactly, yeah. We, we always say any question we ask is an opportunity to improve. Mm. So every or, or every time we ask a question is an opportunity to improve because you really shouldn't have had to ask that question. The fact that you had to stop and ask that question means that there's there's an improvement opportunity there. So if I'm asking, is production on target? I don't even have to ask that question because I look up and we have a light. Green means we're on target. Red means we're off target. Mm. And if I just walk through the factory and see the green light, I know that's all good. Wow. So any question we ask is an opportunity to improve something. Class. Yeah. So moving into level two then, into more of that like organizational, professional, the workplace implementation of this concept. Talk to me about that. Yeah. Well, if you really think about it from you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, you're asking yourself thousands of questions. You don't even know you're doing it. You're asking, where is my clothes? Where is the plate? Where is the, my breakfast? What am I going to eat for breakfast? Uh, what am I wearing today? All these questions. You're not saying them out loud, mm -hmm. but you are still asking yourself these questions. So all we're doing is putting the answers right where you're asking the question to improve flow. Mm. Because we could lean, we could boil lean down into word, one word, it's flow. That's all, that, that's nearly all you ever need to know. All we're doing is creating flow. So you're creating flow every time you ask a question, the answer is there, that, that, that is flow. That, that's really what all we're trying to do. And every process should flow from start to finish. From the minute the order for the chair comes in, to the, to, the, to the second that the chair leaves the factory and goes to the customer and gets on package, there should be total flow throughout that entire supply chain. Mm. And that's really all we're, all we're trying to do. So anytime we don't have the answer to something, we stop and we improve it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of the culture that we have created at, at our company. If the answer isn't there, we stop. That's a term called jidoka. It's a Japanese uh, concept uh, where we stop and fix Mm. So any time we don't have the answer for something, we say, okay, I'm going to stop. And every person has the, the ability and the authority and the power to stop and f stop and put the answer there before they move on. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Something that we noticed, uh, we actually did it in the, the Lean Factory YouTube video that you and I did together. Yeah. I love, if you could just tell people even now really quickly about the the board with the drivers on it is think, yes. a really good example of this. It is, yeah. So if you do a factory tour, uh, a lean made simple tour, you'll you'll have seen this. But it's all the, the pictures of all the delivery drivers' names <clears throat> because we, we feel it's respectful to use a, a person's name and we want to make the delivery drivers feel part of our team. So when the delivery drivers come in, you want to say, oh, yes, Pat, or yes, Jim, or how's it going? You know, you want to use their name. So we have a visual of all the photographs of the delivery drivers right in the dispatch warehouse where we're asking the question. So that's where you're asking, what's the name of your man that drives the <laughs> DPD lorry? Oh, there's the answer. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Very cool. So we had um, one of our previous guests, founder of Gamba Docs, Tom. Yeah. He was big on this. Uh, and big on having standard operating procedures and things like that. Something I really like about what you guys do in the factory as well is you have the standard of work in every single department that's right there. So I'm yeah. and correct me because these details might be a little bit fuzzy, but I'm thinking about Patty, you know, when he's making, say, a Sorrento chair and he's able just to like, I think it's quite a recent improvement from him. He's able just to go and pull down the complete standard operating procedure of how to do this and it's just right there in front of him. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's again, it's back to that really simple concept of wherever you ask the question, that's where the answer should be. You're asking, how do I build this chair? There's the answer. Where does this bolt go? Is it an M10 or an M12? Yeah. 
does a washer need to go here or not? All the answers are right where you're you're building the product. Mm -hmm. And most organizations, most companies, the answers are on a file and a computer stored away somewhere else and that information is held somewhere else. But we love having the answer right where you're asking it. Mm. You know, if you're asking, where is the drill? Here's my drill. Where is the screwdriver to screw in? There's the screwdriver. Before you have the question asked, the answer is <laughs> is, is right there. And yeah. that's that's the sentence stopping part of it. Yeah. Is you if you're implementing this properly, then people are all they're stopping the sentence midway. They're like, "Does anyone know where the?" Never mind, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. And I, I I see it happen uh, all the time at Seat Matters, and I, I'm starting to see it happen with us here as well. Mm -hmm. Stick with Patty and the, you know, the benefit of having all of those answers in front of him and in front of his workstation. Walk me through, for example, what happens if Patty goes on holiday or if there's a new employee, you know, how does that play out because, because of this principle? Yeah, the, w one of the things we talk about is thinking of the next person. It's something that is just is, is part of our language. You're not thinking about yourself, yourself, you're thinking about the next person that's come along. So if you're off on holidays for a week or two weeks, somebody else should be able to step into your job and carry out those processes. And we're able to do that successfully because we've put all the answers where you're asking the question. Mm. So we're not just there to do the job, we're there to improve the job. So if Patty is uh, asking the question, where is the M8 bolts for this particular part? He knows that if he's off on holiday next week, the next person's gonna be asking the exact same question. Mm. So he's gonna put that answer right there for them. So it builds a culture of respect as well, yeah. where you're thinking of the people coming behind you. You're thinking if I'm off for a day, somebody else can step in and do this with total flow and serve the customer. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's ultimately what we're, what we're trying to do is serve the customer. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you maybe a, a silly example of me being on the receiving end of this principle not being implemented properly, right? Yeah. I didn't tell you this, Mark, but I was returning some Amazon stuff, you know, it's the 21st century. This is just the way our lives are. And I went into the shop. It was a wee uh, petrol station we call it over here, gas station if you're American. And went in, had a handful of stuff, was ready to go. I just have a newborn baby. It's like two weeks old. I was doing a couple of errands. It was kind of, you know, going here, going there, going there. Yeah. And walk up to the counter and they're like, okay, <clears> yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, does anyone know where the Amazon phone is? Because they have a wee separate phone that they need to scan all of the, the QR codes. No one knew where it was. And then someone finally found it and it was out of charge. <laughs> and then and then the next thing was, does anyone know where the charger is? And they're asking this person, they're phoning that person, they're going here, they're going there. And they said, sir, we're so sorry. Could you come back in 30 minutes? And I'm like, no, this is me being petty. But me being the customer, I was like, this is terrible service. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I've just come in mm -hmm. here to do a very simple job. And if there had been that implementation of wherever you ask the question, that's where the answer should be. Yeah. Oh, where is the, the Amazon phone? Oh, here it is in the dedicated Amazon phone holder. And where's yeah. the charger for the Amazon phone? Actually, it's right here beside. It's taped in. No one can take it. No one can remove it because yeah. I think what happened in the end, and they were really great. They were apologetic when I came back in. They said, sorry, one of the office workers forgot their phone charger and they just quickly borrowed it. Right. But there should be a way that that just it just right. stays there. You yep. know what I mean? And so those questions, the answers are just right there in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's. I think how I felt, the reason why I shared that story in such a way is because I actually felt disrespected. That's how I felt. Yeah, and as a customer. As a customer. And that's what you were just talking about. And that's what yeah. Lean is all about, is yeah. it's bringing that level of respect and honor to, to everyday life, which I think is beautiful. It is. And th that's why I get so excited about Lean, because mm. it is that simple. It's the phone charger example. It's the the Wi-Fi password example. You know, what, what, if you Google Lean production or Lean manufacturing or Lean thinking, all this, this <laughs> reams of information come up in Google. It's really off-putting. There's charts, it's graphs, it's value stream mapping. It's really, it's actually really complicated, a really complicated business philosophy. Yeah. But what we have done is simplified it right down to the person at the checkout at the Amazon counter can get it. Yeah. The person working in the Starbucks can get it. Um, Patty, who's assembling the, the, the wood for the, the chairs, can get it. Every single person gets this information because it's so simple. Mm. Yeah, and, and it works everywhere. It works in every industry, every company, every organization. Anybody can take this concept right after this podcast and go and do something about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah.
Brilliant. Yeah. Talk to me about how <clears> you apply this principle in your morning meetings, because I think that that's, it's such a small thing. Like I remember the first time I did a tour, I'm thinking about like one slide in particular and it flashed up on screen. Couldn't have been more than like five to 10 seconds. Yeah. And I just went, why have why have I never seen this before yeah. in my life? I think another one you you, you mean. It's, Go ahead. Uh, who's off today? Yes, that's I? the exact yeah. one. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a slide that we've had in our meeting for a couple of years, and we're always asking, "Who's off?" That's the question we ask all. The, who's off today? Who's in holidays? Yeah. We have a slide at the start of every meeting. These are all the people that are off. So there's no point running around the factory or the office looking for them because they're not here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we're putting the answer where you're asking the question. So first thing in the morning. These are all the people that are off. Yeah. And it just cuts out so much waste. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Am I right in saying that there's, I, <clears> I <throat> kind of stored it in my head as maybe like a, a grade or like there's two parts. It's who's off today and who's off tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Mate, that yeah. is killer. Yeah. Because again, it just primes. You, this is this is actually even, <clears throat> this is maybe coming to the level three a little bit, but this is like you're providing answers before the questions are even asked. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because if there's somebody off tomorrow and you need to meet them or organize something with them, you know you have to get it done today because they're, they're not going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. So all we're talking, back to flow again, we're just creating flow. That's all we're doing is trying to create flow. Wow. So before we move into the kind of level three where we talk about, you know, global and society and how this principle could, could radically change the world, is there anything else that you think we should cover or any more examples that you think would be great to, to kind of nail this principle for the, the work uh, and professional sphere of our lives and how you implement that across a team culture? Uh, something that comes to mind, we were uh, in Edinburgh a few weeks ago, myself and my wife, we went away for the weekend, and we went into a steakhouse called Kylo, I think it was Kylo Steakhouse, really unbelievable place. But what's the first question? Well, I do it. What's the first question you ask when you go into a steakhouse? Well, I want to know what do the steaks look like. I want to know what's the difference between a rump and a sirloin and a fillet and a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. Because they can't assume that you know. I, I don't know. I'm not clear on all the different types of steak. <laughs> oh, Ryan, a country boy like you. I thought you would have been butchering your own cows and all. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable because we sat down and the first thing the waiter done was they came across with menus and whatever. Welcome to, to the restaurant. Then they brought out a, like a big long plate. Mm. with an example of every kind of steak on it oh. and they came out to the table and explained all the different types and there was labels you know telling you which was which and it just took so m much burden yeah. and overthinking and just created so much flow to yeah. be honest yeah so we were like, ah, oh, that's that's what a ribeye is, and that's what a sir, that's that's all the different types. Yeah. So the answer was where you're asking the question. We're asking, what's all the different types of steak? There's the answer. Mm. A Re really good example. Very low brow example after your steak <clears throat> analogy, but I was just thinking about like in McDonald's yesterday. Uh -huh. I was dropping my my in laws to Dublin Airport, and I, I stopped in, and just the fact that like. The pictures are right there. You know, oh, what is that new chicken, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it looked like? It's just like, boom, it's yep. just right there. Yeah. Have you ever been to a Brazilian steakhouse? I haven't, no. So Brazilian steakhouses, they are, they're pretty unbelievable because they're all you can eat. So uh, you go in and you pay, you know, the hefty the hefty fee. And they have these wee, if I remember right, it's been a while, I, think I went to one in New York, and they have these wee wooden things yep. on your, your the end of your table. And if you flip it one way, they'll just keep bringing steak. They'll just not stop. And if you want to pause for a sec, let's you know, you need to take half an hour just to you know slow down or whatever. You just flip it over, and they'll just stop bringing it stuff to you. Uh -huh. When you're ready to go again, you just flip it over. Right. And so it's just uh, really yeah. clear. That's There's no back and forth. Sir, do you want some more? Mm. Or what about this? What about that? Or you're not asking people. It's just so 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 clear. Uh -huh. There's all that friction's removed. Yeah, that's a lovely lovely dining experience. You know, uh, it's a really good example. Yeah. So, zooming out, then we've talked about. McDonald's, <laughs> we've talked about big businesses. How would this principle radically change society, change the world that we live in, change our communities, change our families? If we started to really like take hold of it, what would we start to see some of the changes that would happen? Yeah, I, I think all we're trying to do is free up our mental brain power. That's mm -hmm. really all we're trying to do. We shouldn't be hit with all these questions every day and trying to struggle to find the answer. Just imagine for a second if we were able to free up even 10 or 20% of our brain power. You know, if all the answers to the things in our day-to-day -day life were there, mm -hmm. we'd be so much more freed up to think, to be more creative, to come up with new ideas, to come up with new 
a, a new direction for the business, a new product, a new, you know, it, it really frees your mind up for creative thinking when yeah. you're not into the nitty gritty of answering all these small menial questions. So I think with that in mind, I think any organization can embrace this. Mm -hmm. If if you done nothing, only embraced this one, implemented this one concept into your organization, into your company, yeah. you, you could transform it and you would transform it yeah. the, the way we have at, at Site Matters. Uh, another real life example that has just came to me is we recently went to Centre Parks uh -huh. uh, in the south of Ireland. Unbelievable holiday if anybody hasn't been. That is literally the the best example I have ever seen of wherever you ask the question, that's where the answer should be. Mm. You drive into the park, you're asking, what time does it, this is the opening times. What time does the park close? It's there. Mm -hmm. Where is the key to my room? They hand you the, the key before you've even got out of your vehicle. You don't even have to get out of your vehicle. Wow. What time does this restaurant, what, how many restaurants are there? Every question you're asking, the answer is like, it's right there. Yeah. They've carefully planned and thought through the entire process from the customer's perspective. Mm. So all we're doing here is trying to serve the customer better. Mm -hmm. So it's putting yourself in the customer seat and saying, okay, I'm the customer. How am I viewing this business? If, I'm, if I want to purchase a chair from St. Matters or go on a holiday at Centre Parks or have a steak at Kylo Restaurant, <laughs> putting yourself in the customer seat yes. and looking at it through their perspective is the best way, I think, to implement this concept. And this is where I think <clears throat> I have a lot of issues with like public sector and, and government and healthcare systems and things like that is because the table is kind of flipped where it's not, how can I think about the, the person who's receiving this? It's a, yeah. oh, no, no, no. Like, you know, you have to jump through my hoops and you have to do things this way. And, you know, they, the burden of everything is put on the individual. Yes. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you look at Amazon, <laughs> you know, yeah. Amazon is just, they make everything easy. I'm sure Amazon has got, for being such a complex business, one of the um, smallest amount of like customer uh, having to answer questions because it's just so clear. How do I return this? Oh, there it is. It just makes it so, so, so yeah. simple. Yeah. And, you know, I know where we live anyway, like if you're trying to call the GP to book in uh, an appointment to see a doctor, yeah. You know, it's like trying to get Taylor Swift tickets. Uh, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. and, and the, the whole attitude around that is not one of service. It's one of, oh, well, you need something that I have. Like, you need to come and get it. And mm -hmm. if there was a way, and you could apply this to, you know, city councils or the schools that your kids go to or the healthcare system, if we had that attitude of respect and that attitude of yeah. honor yeah. and be like, actually, we're going to make it really, really easy. The questions that you have, of which there are many, we're going to make it so, so, so clear to have the answers for you exactly where you need them to be. Yeah. Mark, so powerful. who's your boy, Diego? Diego Forte? Yeah. The four-hour worker. No, not four-hour worker. The second brain. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit, and I'll give you the angle that I'm, I'm going for here. Ryan talked about earlier about you know, waking up every single day and having all of these questions and all these cognitive tasks that, that you have to do. What's his philosophy on what the modern brain actually should be used for? And the second brain, uh, and the whole second brain concept as well. My understanding of it, so the idea is like um, the brain is for having ideas, not for storing ideas. Yeah. So that comes back to, I suppose, what Ryan, you were saying about the creative energy thing. Um, probably the concept comes to mind for me is more James Clear's Atomic Habits. So he talked about an idea called decision fatigue, um, which is like, that's why, you like, last night I was working all day, yesterday making little decisions, came home fully intending to cook, ended up ordering Domino's pizza. <laughs> 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 Love it. <laughs> um, you know, that, that kind of thing of the decision fatigue is the idea of... Um, the, the more and more decisions you make in the day, yeah. the more difficult decision making becomes as time goes on. So there's those two kind of elements to it. There's making the right decisions becomes more difficult the more you have to make. Mm. So the more of them you can outsource to having the answer in the, um, in the right place oh. so you don't have to make yeah. those decisions, <laughs> the, more, yeah. um, the more likely you are later to make kind of better decisions mm -hmm. later in the day. 
and then also the creative energy that you were talking about so that's the the second brain Tiago Forte kind of idea of get all of the storage of information out of your brain so your brain's freed up to have ideas yeah um apply that to business and suddenly you've got a whole team of people whose creative thinking is just leveled up completely so (laughs) and this is where i have to be honest with with you ryan like the first time i went to seaton matters there was a few things that i got right away i was like this is great and there's things where i was like these guys are nuts like these guys are so what's the point it's so extra like it's over the top and one of them was like having a place for everything so having a place for where the milk would go or having a place where this specific tool goes and i was just like what's what's the point in all that and see now it's because it frees your brain up. And I'm doing silly things like I was sharing with you before we started recording, like having a dedicated place where my toothbrush goes, having a dedicated place where my toothpaste goes, mm-hmm. having a dedicated place where my razor goes and my nail clippers and yeah. this and the shower gel because it's just one last thing. And so in my daily life now, if there's things that I find that I'm repeating, as Mark says, I just, I now I've given myself permission. It's like, you can outsource this to a system. Yeah. You can free your brain up. And I think that's, the real exciting part of this principle is that you're just, as you say, giving people 10 to 20 percent to X percent amount of their brains back. Yeah. And if we as a as a town and a city mm-hmm. and a nation and a, a world were able to do that, like you'd be yeah. able to do so much more. You, you would. And, and that's where people uh, implement lean in the wrong way. People think lean is a, uh, an organizational tool. Uh, you know, a, a systems tool, a procedures tool, a, a having a standard for everything. And, and it is, but the real power of lean is exactly what you said, to free your mind up to be creative. Mm. We don't have 60 people making and assembling and selling chairs. We have 60 people that are problem solving and yeah. creative thinking. Yeah. Because all the, the menial stuff has been looked after by, by processes and systems. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I want to add one more thing uh, on what I said earlier where I, I think I used the term like, so you can do more things. It's not always about more. And so I I just even thinking like, you know, those are the personal examples I shared of like, you know, the toothpaste, blah, 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 blah. It just means that my brain is free to, to give that energy to my newborn or give yes. that energy to my wife or give yeah. that energy to my daughter or, you yeah. know, for your your employees who are coming home from a, a hard day of work at Seaton Matters. Yeah. I'd like to think that they're not coming home with their brain absolutely decision fatigued, burned out, yeah. you know, frayed, coming home, having to order Domino's pizza, flip's sake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but coming home and they've done a hard day's work, but the, their brain is still that, uh, it has space to mm-hmm. think and be creative and, and give yeah. to other areas. I think that's a really beautiful thing that this, principle offers as well yeah exactly so landing the plane then how can we get started what are some of the the first few steps we can take and then how do you the the kind of million dollar question how do you start to bring this into a team culture yeah i think the the first thing is the awareness of it and hopefully this podcast has opened opened people's eyes to be like whoa, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't realize I was asking all these questions. So the awareness is the first thing. I would say listen to this podcast a couple of times, really internalize what we're, we're, what we're saying here. I've been studying this for almost eight years and I'm still seeing things like, oh, I need to put, put an answer there and there's another question I need to answer. Every day I'm still answering questions and putting the question where, where, where the answer is asked. Mm-hmm. So there's no end to this. There's no end point. There's no, it's a journey, not a destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say, listen to the podcast a couple of times and then try and be aware of all the questions that you're being asked or that you're asking your, yourself mm-hmm. and log them. Even you make a list and then start and say, okay, I'm going to put the answer to this one where I'm asking, I'm going to do this. And just keep doing it, small things every day yeah. and challenge yourself to maybe one thing a day or one thing a week. Yeah. It's surprising the benefits that you'll see in in a few months by just uh, improving these small things every single day. I really like that idea. You've shared it a few times this episode of how a question should be a trigger for this principle to kick in. So you have a question or a team member has a question or a customer has a question. That should trigger this principle in your brain and say, oh, how can I just get this answer? And it's really simple. I, it, 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 it's just kind of coming to my head. It's like, this is what FAQs are all about. You're yeah. on a web page. Yeah. It's just like they're putting the information there right where you want it. So, you know, for your customers, oh, what's what's the, what's the feature of this? Or is this chair suitable for that? Or X, Y, and Z. Just to have that there is, is really interesting. I'm going to come give you guys all a chance to kind of 
give a closing example or a closing thought. Um, so I'm preparing you ahead of time if you want to think about things in your head. Uh, and just as we kind of wrap up, we always like to to encourage people to come to Northern Ireland, to come and see Seaton Matters for yeah. themselves, come and do a Lean Made Simple factory tour. I know for me, it was the start of my lean journey. It was the, to see things physically as a, a digital business owner was really, really helpful because it allowed just all the wee things in my brain to fire off and say, ah, now that I grasp this concept because it's so clear and so physical in front of me, Seaton Matters is like... Uh, it's like Disneyland for lean. Like it really is. It's it's the perfect place to come and see it all in action. And so you can do so uh, by clicking uh, the link in the description of wherever you're listening or watching this episode. It'll take you to the website and you can book a tour for yourself and your team. And I couldn't recommend it more. Closing thoughts, producer Mark, anything? Nothing more than what you've added. Respect. Um, I think we could talk about examples all day, but we've, we've mentioned plenty. So. Closing thoughts from you guys. Anything from you? I think what one thing to to make really clear is the simplicity of this. It's mm. so simple and so practical, practical, and so applicable right now. Like literally, after listening to this podcast, you you could make you, you could make an improvement based on what we've talked about, and that's what I love about this information. It's so practical. Yeah, you know, James, my son, is with us here today. Come on over, James. So James oh, really on, wanted James. to see the the podcast and how the whole thing was set up. And James actually does lean improvements at home. Don't wow. you, James? Mm-hmm. Can you give us an example of uh, any of the improvements that you've made, James? Yeah. So the night before I go to sleep. Yeah. The night before, uh, the next, the next day when I wake up, I set up, I put all my clothes out. So whenever I wake up, I'm like, what am I going to wear? I'm not like. What am, what am I going to wear? And then my clothes is right in front of me. Hey, that's awesome. So you're not having to hoke through your big heavy drawers mm-hmm. and am I going to wear blue? Am I going to wear red? You've made the decision ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So when you have that question, what am I going to wear today? Boop. Look at me, I'm a genius. Past version of James has already set it out. That's mm-hmm. a good example. James actually made another real, really good improvement. There was a competition at school, a mini garden competition, and uh, James decided that he was going to win the competition. Oh, good. So uh, me and James done the competition and we put the answer where the question was asked because we knew the teacher was going to ask, how did you do this, the project? So we done a video of the whole project and we put a QR code on the side of the wee mini garden project ah, and the teacher was able to scan it and see a video of James doing the project. Brilliant. And he ended up winning, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable, James. <laughs> First place. You. First place, yeah. Love it. James, we're delighted to have you here today. I hope you enjoyed your podcast experience. Mm-hmm. Thank you, good man. Awesome. And thank you. Hope you enjoyed your podcast experience as well. (laughs) Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.